What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. Moving on to the next section, actually over the next couple of sections, what we're gonna talk about is factoring. And this is a super important section, super important tool that you're going to run into, not only in this course, but over the rest of your high school career in grade 11 and 12. Also, you'll probably run into it in university if you have to take math related courses as well. So super important to get the fundamentals down. There's all kinds of different types of factoring and we're gonna go through all of them. But just in general, let's keep it general in this video just to give you an overview. The way I like to think of factoring is basically it's the opposite of expanding. So the last few sections, what we've been doing is expanding and simplifying expressions. Well, factoring is now going backwards. It's the opposite of that. So for example, we've done questions where, for example, we had to maybe expand something like this. And how do we do that? We take the 2x and we distribute it in the bracket. So 2x times x gives us 2x squared. And then 2x times 5 would give us 10x. So going this way, is expanding well now what's going to happen is we're going to be given this and we have to get to this over here so going the other way is going to be factoring and like expanding it doesn't have to be in terms of one variable so we might get something like let's say 3xy and then over here let's say we got like x squared plus 5y squared okay i'm just thinking of random expansions here. So 3xy times x squared, that would give us what? 3x cubed y plus 3 times 5 is 15. And then we'll have xy cubed like that. So again, going this way is expanding. Well, now we're going to be given expressions like this, and we have to go this way, which is going to be factoring. So with expanding, we were given this, and this was the answer. With factoring type of questions, we're gonna be given this, and then this here is going to be the answer. We can also factor in terms of two binomial factors. So we've also done questions where, for example, we got like x plus five times two x minus one. And so how do we expand this? Well, we foil it out, so we'd have 2x squared, we'll have minus x, we'll have 10x, and then we'll have negative five, like this. And then notice that these are like terms, 2x squared, that would give us what, 9x, and then we'll have minus five. So going from here to here, expanding, well now we're gonna be going from something like this and then factoring it into these two factors right here. And it's gonna be done with something, with a method called decomposition, which we're gonna go over in a future section. But again, I'm just keeping this video general in order for you to understand what factoring is. Now, factoring, it is a very important tool in terms of dealing with quadratics. So notice here, this is a quadratic here, and then this is the factored form of a quadratic. But quadratics aren't the only types of expressions we're gonna be factoring. Okay, so for now, you could think of it, we're gonna be factoring two types of expressions, either quadratics, which is gonna probably be the majority of the next few sections, but we're also gonna be factoring non-quadratics like that example that I wrote down before where we had the multiple variables. That wasn't a quadratic that we were expanding and then factoring that is not gonna be a quadratic, right? So we're gonna be factoring both quadratics and non-quadratics. Those are the two uh, general classifications you can keep in your mind, but factoring quadratics is going to be a super important part. A lot of word problems are gonna be dealing with quadratics like we've used before, but now we're gonna to have to take standard form quadratics like this and then put it into factored form, right? So factoring quadratics is gonna be a big portion, 
but we're also going to be factoring non-quadratics sort of on the side, but the majority is going to be factoring quadratics. Now, to go into a little bit more detail here in terms of quadratics, so we got this general classification of what we're going to be factoring, and then if we zoom in to this portion into quadratics, if you remember, quadratics are basically given in three different formats, and we've gone through this before. So they can be given in standard form, which is just y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. They can be given in vertex form, which is y equals ax minus h squared plus k. And they could also be given in factored form which is y equals a x minus m x minus n. So we've gone through a bunch of videos dealing with all three of these formats. And if you haven't watched those, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the website. The link is in the course description and all the videos are in order. Highly recommend you watching them in order because there's a lot of carryover. So we've gone through these formats now. We've also talked about how to go from one format to another. So going from vertex form, for example, to standard form, how do we do that? Well, we just expand this quadratic right there. So for example, if we got like, let's say y equals two x minus three squared plus five, well, what we could do is we would do two, x minus three times x minus three. When you FOIL those out, simplify it, you'd end up with x squared minus six x plus nine. Then we got the plus five. Then we distribute the two inside the bracket. We'll have two x squared minus 12 x. And then we'll have two times nine, which is 18 plus five. Those are like terms. That would give us 23, All right? So going from vertex form to this standard form, all we do is we expand. Same thing with factored form. So let's say we wanna go from factored form to standard form. We also expand. So for example, if we got like y equals three, let's say x plus five, x minus two, like that. So we'd have, so this is factored form here. If we expand this bracket, simplify everything, we'd end up with x squared, 5x minus 2x would give us 3x, and then we got minus 10. And then we distribute the 3 in the bracket, we got 3x squared plus 9x minus 30, like that. Right? So going from factored form to standard form, we're also expanding. So we know how to go from here to here, here to here, but notice there's a lot of other combinations. And more specifically with these next few sections, when we're dealing with factoring quadratics, remember this is not for factoring non-quadratics, this is only when we're dealing with quadratics. Factoring, what it does is it takes us from standard form to factored form. Okay, so from the perspective of quadratics, factoring is this process over here. Right? How do we go from here all the way to here? And this is an important process because if you remember a factored form, it gives us the x-intercepts of a quadratic. That's the biggest characteristic that we get. Well, now if we get a quadratic in standard form and we're able to factor it, right, we can get those x-intercepts by taking this, converting it to that. So that's where factoring comes in. It's taking that standard form, converting it to factored form. A um, couple of things I want to mention, this is going to be in future sections, going from standard form to vertex form. We're not going to be covering that. I think it's going to actually be in a future unit, but going from standard to vertex, that's actually going to be using something called completing the square, right? And that's an entirely different process. And then the only thing that's remaining here, the only combination is going from vertex to factored form, but usually you don't go directly from here to here. Okay, what happens is if you want to go from vertex form to factored form, what happens is we first expand to standard 
and then we go from standard, we factor to that factored form. Okay, we usually don't go from vertex to factored. So this pathway here is not usually something that is covered. It would be super weird. Maybe your teacher will cover it. I highly doubt it. I don't even know how you would um, go directly from here to here. If you wanna go from vertex to factored, you would expand to standard, and then from standard, you would factor like that. Okay, so that's how it looks like in terms of the quadratics, right? The whole flow over here, and more specifically the factoring, it's gonna be this process going from standard to, um, to factored. But again, we're not just gonna be factoring quadratics, we're also gonna be factoring non-quadratics, but the majority is gonna be factoring quadratics. All right, so over the next couple of videos and the next couple of sections, we're just gonna be working on different types of factoring.